Welcome back, guys, to another episode of Dark Souls 3 Lore Through. Alright, so we got a bunch of the uh, first pieces of information about this world and Firelink Shrine, and now we are in Lothric and we're going to learn all about the crazy stuff here. The first thing we kind of notice is that there's these what look like hollows, or at least humans, that are being turned into trees and they're kind of like pointing up into the heavens. Some are more advanced than others, but they're like becoming, you know, they have all these branches and they're like growing a bunch of limbs or something, I don't know. And to me, they all like, I mean, we can kind of check them out later. I don't think they're all 100% like this, but they all like seem to point at a very specific place over here. But, um, yeah, that's interesting. So you can see more, and they're pointing this way, and there's other hollows worshipping them. I'm going to try to parry as much as I can as I go through. Now this guy over here is a screamer with the lantern, and if I don't kill him quickly, he'll get a whole bunch of other people to attack me, so... But yeah, these hollows are very non... They don't attack, and then they get kind of scared when you come by. Yeah, see, they're all kind of facing over this way. Like, they keep... They're all... Do you see what I'm saying here? They all look to be pointing over here in some way. They also have these statues just kind of sitting around, which, I don't know, this is an architectural feature I don't think I've ever seen in real life, just like on a walkway, just like statues, all identical, holding, holding candles and such. Oh, and a dragon. That has like a beard. And it has a particle effect coming off of him, but he certainly seems to be, like, turned to stone or something. There's another screamer over here. But yeah, and here's the dragons of Dark Souls 3. Kind of crazy. We got our binoculars, which are an item in this game again. Binoculars made of brass. Their utility is singular, but applications many. The value of these specs depend greatly on the imagination of their owner. And we're going to equip those right away, so you don't miss anything. Pine resin. Rare pine resin which emits golden sparks. Chunks of it are even rarer. Uh, its origins are unknown, although some have speculated that it may in fact be a type of fungal resin.
Now we're just down below where the screamer came out right here. Um, all right, so let's go on down here to what looks like a prison. Or just maybe it's a gate. I'm not sure. But I'm just going to run for it because there is a big dragon that comes here. This will be the only way I can get in here. Oh gosh. I'm not going to grab that thing over there. That's a claymore. But I'll grab this. Alright. Uh, we said we wanted to read the gems as well, uh, but I guess we'll read the club. A simple wooden club characterized by savage leaping attacks. This crude bladeless strike weapon is effective against most foes. Skill is war cry, and that boosts your attack. And that is, enables a special strong attack. Um, oh, I thought we found a gem. Sorry, we didn't. And, actually, interestingly enough, we have our first mimic just right away, which just tells you that this game is not playing. But you can see the chain is pointed down and that it's breathing. And they're a lot harder. Or, I guess, uh, I should say they're a lot more uh, health, and they do a lot of damage, so I guess that means harder, but, I don't know, their attacks are slow. They continue the long-standing tradition of having ascended weapons in them. Deep battle axe. Which is the battle axe with deep on it. Uh, doesn't have much in there, so we're just going to continue on so that thing stops screaming. Now we can open this door, which we couldn't open if we had went the other way. Now we come across our first enemy. I'm going to attempt to parry him. Okay, it's partial, but I'll take it. Okay. Let's actually go kill all these guys down here. Oh, I guess he didn't. I probably just got them to come at me. Whoops. These guys I can't parry at all. I don't know why. Um, the size of the of the glows indicates the quality of the item, although I feel like at this point it's kind of relative, so they're all kind of high. Okay. More 
fire bombs. And we have our next bonfire. Might as well rest at. So yeah, these are kind of all facing wherever. So I don't know if they're all facing a certain direction on purpose, or it's a coincidence, or if this is a mistake, or if that was a mistake, I don't know. You can uh, kill this, by the way. I'm pretty sure you can. I don't think it flies away. Uh, I've never done it. I had, uh, you know, a certain amount of arrows, and then I don't. Th I think I like ran out of them. Um, and here's another dragon. Seem, sure seems to be a lot of dragons here. If this, as if this were like Drang Lake or something. Um, we'll go down here later. Um, for now, let's just continue on. Getting a lot of souls. Again, some more people worshiping a dragon. Don't know the timing on these guys. That was closer. It might just not be worth it. Um, and you know, uh, um, Budix Gundir exploded into that weird thing, which we don't know the name of yet. Well, one of these hollows does the exact same thing, and then when he does, it's hard to kill him, and you don't get anything for it. So I'm going to rush in here and try to kill him before that happens. Oh, great. Ugh. Or not. Right. Got a raw gem and large soul. And I'm just gonna leave the guy there. Now we can read gem. Maybe that's a yeah. A gem of infused titanite forged the weapons of Lothric foot soldiers used to create raw weapons. And we know what raw weapons are. So yeah, um, we can see a couple of really interesting things here, which we might have to speak about later, but there's a guy, there's a statue here of a guy, and a certain sword, and there's like light shining down on it. Uh, that's an important guy in the story. Um, also, there's this kind of knight thing here, the huge halberd with like little wings on the back. Not similar, but I mean evoking that thing we saw at the end of last episode with wings on it. And here is an enemy that I legit hate. Can't get a bead on him ever. Oh, 
Oh no. Always too late. onto him, that's the thing. Ugh, always predict wrong. I just, I hate this guy. <laughs> I don't know what to do with him. Okay, just get out of here. Oh, we got a helm, by the way. I forgot to check. Typical helm for a Lothric soldier. Iron made, but half fallen apart. It's never unwise to wear a sturdy form of head protection against arrows and other somatic threats. forget that I was here. Okay. Undead hunter charm. Tool used to hunt down the undead. Blocks Estus. Uh, used long ago by Lloyd's cleric knights on their undead hunts. Although All Father Lloyd is long forgotten by the Way of White, his hunts have lived on, and this charm allows one to challenge undead without fear of tenacious healings. That's kind of a, an example of, a, of an all-knowing narrator, because... Oops. It says that the Way of White, which still exists today somehow, doesn't know about... All Father Lloyd, but yet it's talking about All Father Lloyd. And knock the AI, AI right out of him. Green Blossom, which I think in this game is more important than any other game, but probably doesn't have a great description. Green weed shaped like a flower. The undead legion of Farron are remembered for the, using this annual plant, normally found near clear water, to swing their mighty swords with abandon. Never talk to me and my son ever again. Broad sword. Yeah, these first set of uh, weapons, I, which is more powerful. We should equip it. Straight sword with broad blade designed for slashing. A large sweeping attack makes this effective using against crowds and its stance as well. Let's just do that for now. I do plan on using some sort of straight sword in this playthrough. As I say, I'm going to do a quality build. Silver Eagle Kite Shield. Orthodox metal shield engraved with a crest depicting a silver eagle. Medium shields are the most average of shields, providing a practical balance of damage, absorption, stability, and weight. And you can do whip weapon skill with it. In other words, it won't parry, but when you hold it, then it will make it so you can use your weapon skill in your other hand. It's kind of nice if you're big into weapon skills. All right, well, let's try to take out this room here. I 
I have no Estus, so I'm going to attempt to do it one at a time. Alright, finally. Okay. Who's going to notice me? You. I would love to practice my parrying, but I feel like it would just be better to, with no Estus, to take these guys out normally. Especially this guy. He can be brutal. Perfect. This kind of reminds me of the area with the cook in Dark Souls 1 in the depths. Now we have an Estus Shard, which I'm going to actually read now. A shard soaked in Estus. Give to the blacksmith at the shrine to increase his usages of the Estus Flask. In the old days, it was rare to see an Estus flask far from its owner, but this shard offers hope, however shattered. Weird. Okay, and you can see how big that is, because that is a key item. Cell key. Uh, I guess the key items are here. Key to a cell holding thieves and the like. There is no shortage of brash thieves in Lothric, and these particular thieves likely scaled the wall from the undead settlement. Uh, but they are only willing to practice their thievery on the high wall, for their fear of Lothric Castle, rumored to devour men, keeps them clear of its grounds. Um, yeah, and we're going to. Uh... We're gonna put this here, I think. Can we just get rid of these? Like, yeah, okay, I'm not gonna use that. Um, so let's do this. Since I have no Estus, let's just redo this area. Okay. And just in case, various games you have to rest again and whatever, I'm just gonna do it to be safe. All right, and so, all right. These guys look like thieves. You know, they're using the bandit's knife. I don't know if that means these guys are from the undead settlement. I also have the throwing knife, which I think we might have grabbed that, I just didn't read it. Most items choose their wielder and only experience can improve their effectiveness. True strength can be gained in no other way. So they started to add the color commentary that they added in Dark Souls 2, basically. Okay, and this is not the door, actually. This is another door, which we will come back even later for. So yeah, you can see how big this is. So it's probably a weapon or like an ember. Yeah, it's throwing knife. Same difference.
similar thing. Interestingly enough, we're overlooking that one room where we got the Titanite shard and like inside that doorway is the guy I hit that like stopped attacking me. Oops. That's an area we haven't been yet, but we will be going in a second. We're right there. <laughs> We're going to go down. You can see there's some guys hanging off the edge there. Just checking out, just checking out the area. There's where the dragon was. And there's nothing down there. So I guess this kind of reminds me of Logan too in the Duke's archives. Um, so I guess you should have come here and then whatever, but we're gonna use the cell key and talk to this little guy. Ah. You no jailer, are you? No, no, you're from far away. And judging by the bell, you must be some of that unkindled ash. Remarkable. If that's true, then I have a favor to ask. Below the high wall is a musty little town. Not the home of any lord, just a, a very old settlement of undead. Mm -hmm. An old woman, Loretta, lives there. Please, give her this ring. I, I, I'm not asking for charity. In, fa in fact, if you do this for me, I'll be sure to repay you in kind. I may be a petty thief, but I've more wits than most royalty. What do you say then? Huh? Sure. So he says, you know, we knew that the cell was, you know, to hold thieves that had scaled the wall that came from the undead settlement, and then he's describing the town he came from, which is an undead settlement, not the home of any lord. And uh, he's going to give a ring to us so we can give it to someone that we know there because he assumes. He also spoke about the fact that he knew what the bell meant and that he knew that, you know, because there was a bell that we must be unkindled ash because um, we're a stranger to these parts, I guess. Another kind of note taken from Bloodborne that people can sense our foreignness or whatever. But let's say that we're going to do it. Very well. I humbly place my faith in you. I am Grey Rat of the Undead Settlement, and I promise to assist you. Give this ring to old Loretta at the base of the high wall. Do your part, and I'll do mine. Blue Tearstone Ring. A ring from Katerina. Although I don't know what it says here. It was also talked about uh, as a ring of Kytha in, a, in Dark Souls 2. A ring set with a large rare tear stone jewel. This stone is said to be a tear of sorrow of the goddess Kytha. And of course, tears are always more beautiful near death. Well, why not put it on when you only have two? So anyway, Grey Rat went back to uh, Firelink Shrine. Um, which we will be, oops, we will meet him again, but we also have to find this Loretta person. All right, let me see if I can kill this guy now. Um, I guess... One more time parrying. Ugh. I'll never get it. All right, here we go. Okay. <laughs> Perfect.
Wow. Okay. Already putting stuff into our uh, box. Deserter trousers. Common soldier's trousers. This musty rusted hunk of metal befits one reduced to thievery. Again, the thieves climb the high wall. I don't know if those are all thieves, because as we'll see uh, when we get to the undead settlement, the thieves that live there look much more like Grey Rat than they do these guys. So, All right, so here we can see all these Lothric knights. Uh, I kind of destroyed some of them with um, swords sticking into them. And likewise, we see this guy, this big guy that we saw. He had wings on. This one doesn't have wings. But he has got plenty of swords sticking out. There he is. It's his brother. Here is a Lothric Knight. We fought a couple of these guys, but this one's a dead one. So it appears like there was a great battle that, that happened here. I'm going to try my best to fight this. Easy peasy. And there you can see I just got an Estus flask. You get Estus flasks for uh, killing certain enemies. Like, I don't know, I don't think there's like an exact thing that anyone's ever figured out, but it's just like some enemies tend to give you some, and not all the time though. So yeah, we can see the statue now down here. We can see a thing of what looks like could be the crest of Lothric. Lots of dead Lothric soldiers. Plus these thieves that are asleep here. And get a rapier. A lightweight thrusting sword used in noble duels and play for fine techniques. Thank you. The primary attack to thrusting sword is a series of stabs that render foes vulnerable for a devastating final thrust. You can also attack with the shield up and the stance similar uh, uh, weapon art to the long swords that I'm using. Also, these statues of Lothric knights with their head in their hands. Their heads have been cut off and they're holding their heads. And that's a statue. Like, that is... Like, that's... Like, so Lothric made these. Soul of Deserted Corpse. And there's something awesome over here. Ring of Sacrifice. Ring of Elka. Oops. This mystical ring was created in a sacrificial rite of Velka, the goddess of sin. It's where we'll lose nothing. A sacrifice is only worth as much as the life it spares. It's true. Um, but we go back to the Dark Souls 1 description of that. In fact, the Dark Souls 1 title of it. It used to be called Ring of Protection or something in, in Dark Souls 2. Oh, here we go. 
Acquire green blossoms. And now we have opened up our first shortcut. Now, I didn't go this way first because I knew we were going to be coming through here. Take that. Okay. All these dogs. Hmm. Trying not to draw the attention. Is there an item in here? Did I miss? Yeah. Okay. Okay, he's just standing there. Great. I got another Estus. Um, so there's another guy up here that turns into a thing. So I'm going to try to rush him. I love how this guy runs to like get a distance on me. Pick up our first longbow. Longbow commonly used by hunters. Arrows must be equipped in order to use bows. Up to two kinds of arrow can be equipped. Punctures the skill. Pull the arrow even further back for more powerful shot. So yeah, just more of the same that we can see here. These guys that collapse when we interact with them sometimes. And these guys, here's a highly ascended one. They're all pointed towards here. And <laughs> some poor textures for an area that we don't go to. I don't think we go to this at all, ever. That's funny. Okay, so I know we're running towards the end of an episode, but let I'm going to actually go back and level up a little bit more and uh, level, get my weapon uh, reinforced at least once. Yes, yeah, so you can see there's a lot of people playing here, so... That's what those three guys on the right mean. So if you want to PvP, you know where to go. Okay, well I'm gonna do my weapon first. Got quite a few Titanite shards. Ah, well that is good to see ye in good health. What needs smithing? Uh we're gonna do this one. We can only do it once, because it goes up quick. Uh, I guess I could make it raw. Um, which would remove scaling, but it would just increase a lot, which might be a good idea for this first stage. But, eh. 
and then we can get the Estus Flask shard. Okay. I think he might only have something to say when we bring him members. Okay. And then Grey Rat appears so we can speak with him. Oh, hello, you're back. I'm in one piece. Well, now it's time I do my part. Whatever trinket you need, speak up. Just don't ask me where I got them. So you can sell to him as well, but you can purchase all these things. We will be reading these another time because, you know, we're just going to try to beat the boss here. Do me a favor and don't forget our promise. I won't. Give this ring to old Loretta at the base of the high wall. A nuisance, I know, but it will help me tie up some loose ends. Do me a favor. Okay. Goodbye. And stay safe. Oh, this place is a ball. What good is thievery if you've nowhere to go? <laughs> Alright. Well, let's... See how much we can level up here. I like how you can always walk a little bit. Um, I guess, ah. let's sell some stuff I'm definitely not going to use. I'll probably use those. I'll probably use those. I mean, this might just be a waste of time to do it on screen. But I'm not going to be using any of this. I might... I might do that. Oops. Um. Ooh, interesting. You can sell that for two thousand. I'll be fine. Ashen one. Okay. Welcome home, I should speak thine heart's desire. Ashen one, sovereign, I will show. Ashen one, okay. sovereign. Okay, just checking. Very well. Then touch the darkness within me. That's very demon souls. Take nourishment from these sovereignless souls. There's a lot of callbacks in this game. For better or for worse. I'd say maybe for worse. Okay, so I have one, two, three. Okay, so let's say... We'll just add to our lot here, and then we only have 200 more. Okay, so I'm just gonna... Uh, oh, really? Okay, well, I'll sell these, because I'll get more. Oh, 200 more. Okay, I'll sell the broadsword. Or the... Uh, longsword. Oh, that's... Hmm. I'm not going to use this. And... Okay. Welcome. Very well. Then take no. Okay. Farewell, Ashen One. Alright, I'm just gonna see if this guy has anything different to say. Aha, uh -huh, there's a new character. What a sick joke. Asking us to seek the we're talking truth. Mm -hmm. So no, but uh, we do have this guy up here. Mm. Unkindled, are we? And fast on the trail of the Lord's absconded? Yes. Then these red eyes are for you. Hmm. Use them to pillage embers and briefly heighten your strength for your duty. What else are unkindled ashes good for? 
<laughs> Pillage embers for briefly heightened strength, for your duty. What else are unkindled ashes good for? Okay. The cracked red orb is far from perfect. It seems as ring finger Leonard knows all too well. Well, that's who we're speaking to. Ring finger Leonhard. He is a described as a ring finger. Uh, there's other fingers in the game, and he's the ring finger. So we'll learn more about that later. I really like how you have such a great large image now in Dark Souls 3. You can really see how that is like a cracked red eye orb compared to the original red eye orb. Okay. So we have missions going all over the place now, but we are going to just go and do the boss. I guess we don't have all these missions, but. We have a number of things we're trying to do for Grey Rat and for Leonard. Alright, so we're just gonna, you know, just use the available shortcuts that they gave us. Does respawn by the way and now we see statues not of knights holding their head but of cutting their own head off which is very strange I would say especially since again they're Lothric base oops oh I have a lot more health it's nice. was not good. Okay. Oh, there he is. Okay, this is gonna get nowhere fast. We'll talk about all the things we can see here. That guy's like, wait, did I see someone? Okay, no you didn't. I'm just trying to be very careful because like, this is, you know, this guy, I hate this guy. Oh, come on. Such a reach. Ah, <laughs> I don't think I've ever parried a skill attack before. I do hate the delay in Dark Souls 3. I think it's unique to Dark Souls 3. Maybe I'm just remembering a certain way. Oops. See, that I've never parried, for example. And that hurts. Okay, I might as well use an Estus here. Um, so 
So yeah, we can see these things here, these turtle guys that are all kind of trying to head here. Yeah, we'll see, there's a whole bunch on the stairs here. Like they're all coming up here. I don't know if I've mentioned, but they're called pilgrims. Um, yeah, so... Go Lucerne. Ooh, that was a nice hit. A pole arm with a sharp, hard, pronged head that inflicts thrust attacks. The Lucerne is wielded overhand like a hammer, or can be swung from side to side to break through shields. And you can do a spin sweep with it. Um, just because we're limited on time, and because I don't feel confident, I am going to skip this guy here and that item. We're just going to come in here where, look, this pilgrim is like holding out its hand, like just touching this. Seems like they're frozen in time or turned to stone or something. And all along here we have knights cutting off their own head. But yeah, we saw this uh, blue window from up above, I guess over here. Now we appear to be in some sort of cathedral. There's pews and everything here. And we can see that there's an area up here with a ladder. However, we will not be able to get there for a long time. And uh, we can see more of these statues, one with the holding of the head and one with the guy cutting his own head off. And what looks like an altar or a set of altars. But then there's this woman who looks a little bit like the Shrine Handmaiden. But let's speak to her and see what her deal's about. Ah, the wait has been long, unkindled one. I am Emma, High Priestess of Lothric Castle. Uh -huh. Allow me to speak frankly. Okay. You will not find the Lords of Cinder here. They have left, gone. To their journey homes converging at the base of this castle. Interesting. Head to the bottom of the high wall, forge on through the great gate, and raise this banner to proceed. So they used to be here. Um, they used to be in Lothric, but when the bell rang, or maybe right before the bell rang, or when another bell rang, they returned to their homes where they actually lived, um, which is interesting. So now we have to go out there, not here. This leads to Lothric Castle, and this leads out to the world. So we have to go there to find them, and we have to raise the banner. This farewell gift is for you. It is the insignia of an old covenant. If you fear trespassers, Dark spirits drawn by the embers. Then etch this upon your heart, and the old conqueror will beckon noble blue sentinels to hunt these foul spirits. Unkindled one, head to the high wall's base. We're headed there anyway. Go through the great gate and raise this banner to proceed. But beware. The dog keeps a close eye on the, <laughs> the vile watchdog of the Boreal Valley. Huh. It's interesting uh, play of words with the eye there, um, which we'll get into later. But uh, yeah, there's a dog of the Boreal Valley uh, that is going to keep a, an eye on us. Unkindled, good but the... Okay. Well, we have a couple things to read now, so let's read the uh, Lothric banner. 
which looks like a circle with a little thing on the right hand side, like almost like a dark sign, but small banner held by Lothric messengers. Oh no, those are just holes. It's just a straight up circle. Hold up outside the main castle gate to be greeted by an escort. When the high wall appeared, the path to the undead settlement was blocked, and messengers came bearing this banner. They were sent out with a duty, but had no way of returning. And then we have a whole area here for uh, covenants. <clears throat> Pale blue sheepskin parchment featuring an illustration of the moon, symbol of an ancient accord. Members of the Way of Blue are the beneficiaries of an, of an ancient accord. When a dark spirit threatens them, a blue spirit will grant them assistance and help to root out the invader. Summoning takes place automatically while this is equipped. Summoning? This is not a blue sentinel, this is the Way of the Blue. I guess summoning of others. Let's equip it. This is where we equip all of our covenants. They draw much more from Dark Souls 2 than Dark Souls 1 for covenants, because Dark Souls 2 had better covenants. can see sure we can see all of these uh, pilgrims going up the stairs presume well, how did someone get a message up there presumably to uh, oh nice People are still actively playing this game a lot, so let's try it with uh, Lana and Valdo. As I say, with all these games, I'm not going to try to, especially this one I haven't played very long, I'll try to summon when I can. So here's the gate Emma told us about. But here's the dog she also told us about. Now he has a new status effect that we really haven't seen yet, called Frost, which is kind of nasty. Uh, we'll read about it later, I guess, but we just don't want to get hit by it. He like came out of the ether, though. Vort of the Boreal Valley. He's got a big club. He's got these nasty attacks where he can just jump across the room, especially in a second phase. So it's always nice to have a second person to help distract him. Key thing is to get out of there. There's always three. The key thing is to get him here at this stage. Come on. Oh. Okay, so that wasn't a good idea. It's kind of like bleeding. Oh, he's dead already. Thank you. Lone Vinaldo, I assume. Anyway, <laughs> Frostbite, um, I guess we can read now. Uh, Soul of Boreal Valley Fort. That is a large gate. Um, Alright, so I guess... Um, Frost. Combine total value of all equipped armors resistant to frostbite. Okay. Um, 
I don't know where we would find it. I don't know. Uh, I actually don't know exactly what it is, but it seems very similar to Bleed. It, I think it might be more like Bleed was in Dark Souls 2, where it takes away your, um, like a big chunk of your health, value-wise, and then it limits how much stamina you can have, maybe how fast your stamina recovers, and maybe even a bit of your max health. I think it's something like that. It's it's a brutal one. Um, Alright, so I guess, yeah, here it is. One of the Twisted Souls, steeped in strength. Soul of Vord of the Boreal Valley, one of the Twisted Souls. Used to acquire many souls. Vord served as an outrider knight, never far from the fleeting Dancer. Dancer, huh? Um, who else was a dancer? Well, Nadalia was a dancer. Um, we have the uh, the painting guardians kind of said they danced when they swung their swords. Um, and they learned their technique from Ciaran. Um, and Priscilla, I guess they say, is related. So anyway, there's, there's a dancer close by. Hmm. Um, and it's customary, every time you beat a boss, you should go back and talk to everyone. It's not the case in all the other games, but this game for sure. Every time you do something, something will be affected. Alright, and so this was the main bridge going to Lothar Castle. However, you can see that something terrible has happened, or whatever, and it is completely broken off. Now, incidentally, that is the bridge that used to attach to this. So, it almost seems like, since that looks like it's structurally sound, that it looks like this area, Lothric, was wrenched up and pivoted. Um, we'll see more evidence that this bridge here is supposed to be right here. So I'm quite interested in that, but yeah, you can see this area here, which we'll be going to. We can see down here, a uh, there's three towers in what looks like a, a glaive or a swamp. And then we obviously have this area over here, which is, in, which is the undead settlement um, that we're actually going to here. Um, but yeah. So I'm going to go down there and then go back to Firelink. So I'm going to raise the banner. And we get greeted by a Batwing demon. A demon of chaos in Dark Souls 3? Surely they were all defeated. And yes, in a sense, it evokes San Orlando, but at the same time, as we will see a little bit later, it also. You know, maybe it doesn't evoke it, maybe it's related. Not that this is in Orlando or whatever, but by the time we get to some of the DLC, you'll see what I mean. So yeah, I mean, here we can see a bunch of pilgrims heading up this path, which once would which would have gone there where the rest of the pilgrims are. <laughs> so, plus there's a huge dragon on this bridge. Which is interesting. Uh, we're going to explore this in the next video, but let's uh, go back and see um, 
if there's any other new text to read or to listen to. Um, okay. okay, so uh, the Crestfallen Warrior, uh, who actually has a name, um, maybe I guess we'll just learn that later. Um, I don't know if we, is Leonard gone? Leonard is gone. Interesting. Everyone's just gone. Um, I don't know if he's around outside or anything. Um, but let's see if Ludlith has anything to say first. Fret not, fret not. My feet are here firmly planted, for I am a lord, and this is my throne. Knowest thou of no. I know. Now, now. Okay, so, yeah, I mean that. I love this way of doing things, where when you beat a boss, you can come back and you can reliably get new dialogue and such. Except for some people, I think. Wow. Thou yeah, yeah. Like, I don't think she ever has anything new unless you give her an ash, and he doesn't have anything new unless you give him an ember. Ah, tis good. What needs? Ma. Yeah. I know. Whatever. Uh, and he certainly changes, although we did already talk to him, so. Oh, hello. And in one piece. Yeah. Do me a favor. Yeah, yeah. Goodbye. Oh, this uh, <laughs> and so, yeah, I guess we'll wait here. Um, cause I'll just start the next episode while reading his items. Um, anyway, thanks for watching this episode. Um, and next time we're going to get to the undead settlement. Uh, bye.